Um, Harry Potter and Methods of Rationality is a fanfic written by decision theorist Elias Cassie. Hello. And it's one of the most popular Harry Potter fanfics online. It's the most reviewed and most followed on fanfiction.net. And it's received praise by award-winning authors such as David Brin. I don't actually have much to do with it. I'm really just a fan, but I'm a big enough fan that I do the podcast. And so for that reason, Nick asked me to come here and do a panel. Um, also because I live just a few blocks away, so it was really convenient to have me here. Um, you guys are here because you want to know what the big deal is, except for you guys because you already know. Uh, part of the big deal is that it's a really good story, but there's a lot of really good fanfic out there, and generally they don't have their own panels to discuss them. Uh, the thing about Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality, which I'll probably just be calling Methods for short, uh, is that it captures the heart of the rationality movement, which um, maybe you've heard of this rationality thing, maybe not, but it's a growing movement uh, among geeks, uh, certain types of geeks. And when a geek subculture latches onto some particular work of fiction and says, this is us, this is what we are, it's usually because that fiction is pretty good in its own right. Um, My Little Pony wouldn't have the fan base it does if it wasn't good by itself. So the rationality part of Methods of Rationality is pretty important to the whole. And for that reason, before I start in on the fic itself, I'm going to go into rationality briefly and why it makes stories cool. Rationality is the study of general methods for good decision making, especially when finding the right decision is hard. It's about knowing what errors in thinking are common and how we can avoid them. It's about doing things like realizing when we're confused or motivated by bad instincts. If you want to make good decisions, you first have to not fool yourself, and you are the easiest person for you to fool. This makes stories interesting because watching a hero put in a high-stress situation where making a good decision is the difference between life and death can be really fun to watch, especially when they're frantically trying to navigate through a maze of knowledge and have a hard time finding what that right decision is. Now, to make good decisions, we also need true beliefs. Beliefs about the world around us. Rationalists assume that we can know true things about the real world, which may seem like an obvious assumption, but you'd be surprised sometimes. Um, However, our beliefs about reality are imperfect. The model we have of reality doesn't exactly match the actual reality. The map that we have in here doesn't quite match what's out there. In some places, it's completely wrong. Uh, What we need is a way to verify what we know and to discover new true things about the world. A way of separating fact from delusion. Only someone would come up with a way to do that. But wait a minute, you're all telling me, I can see you in your eyes. They did and they called it the scientific method. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you how awesome science is. Can I get a go science from everyone? Go science! I didn't think that would work. Thank you. So, naturally, rationality incorporates the scientific method. Uh, The truth about how reality works has to be part of any effective decision-making algorithm. And anyone who's read good science fiction knows how great a story that struggle to find the truth can be. The search to find out what's going on and why. Uh, The discovery to find a new underlying principle of how the universe works and the power that comes with harnessing that knowledge. And while Harry Potter may be set in a typical fantasy universe, the methods of rationality is definitely a science fiction story. Now, sometimes simply discovering a truth is not enough. Sometimes what we discover doesn't match what we knew before. Um, Doesn't match the assumptions and biases that we use to guide our day-to-day lives. We we rely on those, our reflexive biases and habits, a lot because we couldn't cross a room if we had to think about and plan out every single step while we're walking. So rationality isn't just about finding out what's true about the world. If you wanted to do that, you have the scientific method. You don't need rationality. Rationality is also about updating your implicit beliefs so that they will more accurately match what you have discovered. And it turns out that's not so easy. 
because um, sometimes what we discover goes against our hardwired instincts. Our bodies and our instincts, as you all probably know, have evolved to grab all the calories and resources we can, reproduce, and then die out to make way for the next generation. And so while we may consciously know that eating a bag of potato chips is bad for us, it still tastes really good because it has all those fat and calories in it. And similarly, we may know that a roller coaster is completely safe on an intellectual level. We might know that it's been engineered so that you'd have to try really hard to hurt yourself. But still, when you're first coming up that huge hill at the top and about to go over that drop, you're really terrified. And that's because it's not enough to simply know something. You have to really believe it to have an effect on your behaviors. And to do that, you sometimes got to play dirty. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent. I don't know if you've ever seen Johnny Mnemonic. But it's, there's this old uh, Keanu Reeves movie where he plays a hacker, and at the end, he's told that there's some information in his brain, and to get it, he has to hack his own brain. It's said really epically, and, you know, it's cool. And so we have to do the same thing, a lot. We have to hack our own brains to change our behaviors, and rationality gives us the tools to hack ourselves. And that's another great aspect of rationality stories. Many great stories are about man versus man, or man versus nature. But some of the best stories are about man versus himself, versus his own flaws and his own weak nature. And a lot of stories are written uh, in that way where people wrestle against their own conflicts and inner desires, and most people don't know about rationality as a way of giving you a weapon to do this wrestling more effectively. So those sort of man versus himself stories are often written as like bare knuckle brawls in back alleys, kind of like the fight and they live. It's great fun and it's awesome to watch, but if you take a story and you incorporate rationality upgrades, that struggle with yourself turns into a duel between cyber ninjas with laser swords. It's freaking cool and you don't get to see it in a lot of fiction. So it makes a hell of a show. So that's rationality, and that's how it makes stories awesome and unusual. But why Harry Potter? Because for most of you, it's probably the name Harry Potter that brought you here and not the term methods of rationality, even though both of those are on both posters. Um, to start with, Harry Potter, the Potterverse in general, is very fertile soil for fanfic. There's a reason that some settings only have a trickle of fanfiction and others just explode with it. And it's because some settings provide a rich history in a living world that goes beyond just the characters on stage. There's allusions to events that happened before or that are happening outside the main story. Uh, things like the rise of Grindelwald and the first Wizarding War against Voldemort. And the entire first generation backstory, really. It makes for some great fanfic. There's a lot out there. And also, since Harry Potter takes place in the modern day, in the real muggle world all around us, there's a lot of things you can incorporate in fanfic when you think, how would the world be different if you brought magic into this? So it provides a lot of hooks for people to use to write their own fiction with. The more rich and complex the setting is, the better it is for fanfic, and Harry Potter has a very rich world. But there are many worlds that are ripe for fanfiction. Um, My Little Pony, Star Trek, even Twilight, unfortunately, admittedly all have very rich worlds and have a lot of uh, fanfic written for them. So probably the biggest reason to focus on Harry Potter specifically can be summed up in the title of the second chapter. Everything I believe is false. I mentioned at the start that Yudkowsky is a decision theorist. A lot of sci-fi writers have a background in the sciences, and they often write in the fields that they work in, exploring how things would be a little different uh, in their field if a few rules were changed. So if you wanted to write a sci-fi piece that explores decision theory, you want to make it captivating by having a character who already knows those skills. Um, as a tangent on training, training can be fun, you know, okay, there's origin stories out there, but usually you want to see people at the peak of their mastery. So that's why training stories are often flashbacks or covered in a montage. They're just not quite that interesting. 
So to facilitate this, there is a major change between fanfic and canon. In Methods of Rationality, Petunia, the you know adoptive mother of Harry Potter, marries a university professor instead of an ignorant jerk. And they teach Harry about the scientific method and give him all the skills and ideals of the Enlightenment so that he can jump right into the action from the beginning. Now to really test a character's skills and resolve, you have to thrust them into a completely novel situation, which they didn't prepare for and didn't ever dream they'd be tested in, but, but which still relies on those skills. In the case of decision theory, this means revealing to the character that everything they thought they knew was false. They've been lied to their entire lives, and the world doesn't really work the way that they thought it worked. Now they have to re-examine everything they thought they knew. Everything that they used to think was a fact, they have to consider, is this really true, or is this part of the worldwide conspiracy to keep me ignorant? What beliefs can I keep? What beliefs must I change? And of those that i got to change, which do I have to dump entirely, and which can I just modify? And then finally, how do I internalize those beliefs so I act unconsciously on what I've discovered, rather than defaulting to my old habits? If you ask people to name a setting in pop culture where there is such a radical revelation about the world, where the protagonist learns everything that he used to know is a lie, the two most common answers are Harry Potter and The Matrix. And The Matrix is really cool, but the characters aren't as interesting. They don't have any friends or relatives or backstory. Neo, like his name alludes, is completely new. It doesn't have much holding him to the world. Um, which works for that story, for the isolated loner narrative. It's, and it's a great story. But it doesn't provide for very fertile fan fiction soil. So it's harder to write in, and, and Harry Potter was chosen instead. Also, The Matrix doesn't have magic. There's never a point where someone says, I just saw a human turn into a cat, but it kept thinking using its human brain. What does this mean for what I thought I knew about brains? And on top of all that, Yudkowsky himself is a reader of Harry Potter fanfic, so it was natural for him to write in the setting that he reads, rather than a new setting entirely. So I should probably get to the meat of the story itself. Give me just a second. Methods of Rationality takes place during Harry's first year at Hogwarts. It starts with Harry getting his letter and follows the structure of the first book most of the way through. It has the trip to Diagon Alley, platform nine and three quarters, the sorting, the conflict with Snape, even the troll shows up. Um, but it does all that with a rationalist slant, which makes for a unique story, like I said before, and some of the differences between the original and this are really cool to watch. They lead to some parodies, such as when Hermione Granger is sorted into Ravenclaw. Because obviously, if the most nerdish, bookish person in the Harry Potter universe is not sorted into Ravenclaw, the house of the nerds, there's no reason for Ravenclaw House to exist. So there's, there's some funny things like that in there, but the parody isn't ever mean-spirited. The author really likes the Potterverse, obviously, so he keeps it nice, they're fun. In terms of genre, it's kind of hard to classify methods of rationality into any one category. Large parts of it are comedy, and if you watch anime and like that sort of over-the-top, falling down on your face, winking at the audience style comedy, you will really love methods of rationality. It has a lot of that kind of humor in it. There's Boy Who Lived fangirls that are trying to get Harry Potter to fall in love with them. There's someone trying to summon Harry Potter with an epic, straight out of Lovecraft, Elder God summoning ritual, which doesn't go quite how they expected it to go. But I'm not gonna spoil how it turns out. Uh, but it isn't all comedy. Harry is attacked by a Dementor and relives seeing his parents murdered. He goes to Azkaban and meets a tortured Bellatrix Black. And by tortured, I mean literally being tortured at the time. It's not great. Uh, there's blood debts and ransoms, and the whole time Voldemort's minions are trying to destroy him and kill his friends. So there's action and drama and pathos as well as comedy. But all of it flows very nicely from one to another. Uh, Yudkowsky handles mood switching very well. And the mood, the move from comedy to drama to action back to comedy, it's never jarring. It flows in a way that most professional authors can't even well, most professional authors can get there, but 
It's very well done. Yes, moving on. Even though the story takes place entirely in Harry's first year, it does draw elements from the entire Harry Potter timeline. There's a Time Turner, Remus Lupin, Rita Skeeter, and Mad-Eye Moody all make appearances. The three Deathly Hallows and the Peveril brothers are a major plot point. And unfortunately, Luna Lovegood does not show up, because she's too young to be in Hogwarts in the first year. But she is mentioned, and several issues of the Quibbler float around among the, the students at one point. I did mention the major change from canon, where instead of his step-parents being evil and keeping him locked up, they treat him like a normal person. Um, it wouldn't really work having him locked up with evil step-parents because, like I said, he has to have the knowledge and expectations of the world in order for them all to be shattered with the big revelation. But since almost all of the action takes place at Hogwarts, that doesn't majorly change the story, the change in his parents. Most of the major alterations are because of the application of rationality to the story. The question does sometimes come up, uh, what if I haven't read the original Harry Potter books or seen the movies? There are people who've heard the story are great and want to read it, but don't have much desire to read the original books. And I'm not going to lie, you won't have as much fun. There's a lot of jokes and references that draw from the books directly without being explained uh, completely. If you haven't read the books, you will be confused probably by the whole Weasley pet rat joke that goes around. But it's not as bad as you may think because there's a lot of references to outside things and methods of rationality. There's references to anime, to old science fiction, to Star Wars, even to gargoyles. And so there's jokes in there that will go over everyone's head because no one's going to get every single joke. And, you know, that's okay because when you do get the in-jokes, you'll be like, oh, I got that and that is hilarious. Maybe 5% of the readership got that too, so I'm special. Which is the whole point of in-jokes and they're fun. And when you don't get an in-joke, you just kind of, you know, skim past it. You're like, okay, I don't know what that is, but whatever. It's not a tragedy. Um, when I first read Methods of Rationality, I had not read the last two books in the Harry Potter series yet, and I still love the series. So you don't have to have read the books. Um, the characters are still introduced in a coherent way. The plot is internally consistent, and the knowledge you need to understand and enjoy the story is introduced in the text. So if you're on the fence, go ahead and give it a try. You don't have to plow through seven books that you're not excited about. But honestly, if you can find the time to watch, at least the first movie would help a lot. Because there's, a, you know, it takes place during the first year. Now, some of you may have realized that there's a problem with giving Harry a major rationality upgrade. For a story to be interesting, there has to be conflict, not a one-sided beatdown. There's a law of good fanfic that says if you give Frodo a lightsaber in your fanfic, you gotta give Sauron the Death Star. Fortunately, this is good fanfic, and Voldemort gets a huge intelligence and rationality upgrade. The way he wraps the entire wizarding world into knots and even seduces Harry is epic to watch. Uh, Draco Malfoy gets an upgrade as well, so instead of being an egotistical bully, he turns into a shrewd political plotter. And this makes for really good reading for those of us who are more interested in power grabs and backstabbing than broomstick-based sports. Not that there's anything wrong with broomstick-based sports. Kind of is. Um, personally, the plotting, I think, is phenomenal. Uh, there's foreshadowing everywhere. There's things you read that seem like throwaway jokes or just good narrative color and character building near the beginning which, once you get further in the book, you realize they were giant flashing neon signs saying, this is going to happen later, be careful. And when you read through the second time, they blow you away, the, 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 the seeing that. You're like, whoa, I didn't even notice that. There's checkoff guns laid near the beginning that you aren't fired for another 50 chapters. And don't worry, the chapters are pretty short. You won't be reading forever. Um, the way the little plot points are woven in and out and pulled from the beginning and then wrapped back into the end again is really stunning. And obviously I'm a huge fan, but they are good. Um, there is one final thing about Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality that makes it unusual. It's not just a novel. Um, it's also a deliberate instructional mechanism. 
because human beings learn things through storytelling. Imagining something is mentally analogous to remembering something that just hasn't actually happened. So Yudkowsky uses this intentionally to direct his audience into developing stronger rationality skills. Almost every chapter or group of chapters is designed to teach a technique or skill of rationality. The technique to be taught is right there in the chapter title, such as chapter 26, Noticing Confusion. Most of the time a character, often Harry, will at some point explicitly explain what the technique is and how it's going to be used. The chapter will contain at least one example of that technique either being used or being failed to be used. Uh, sometimes multiple examples. Sometimes multiple examples of both. But before you think it's like a Saturday school special, it's not. The really crazy thing is you don't notice. Uh, the writing is strong and the story really pulls you in. And the lessons are integrated seamlessly into the plot progression. So I generally don't notice until I go back and read a chapter a second time and really pay attention to the title and see you know, where that's coming out that I realize just how central that theme is to the chapter and that I realize that's what's happening, that characters are no failing to notice their confusion, and that's what's causing the problems and the conflicts. Uh, it, it really kind of makes me wish all books were written like that, because that density of information, of having both plot and skill learning, makes for a great use of time and a great story. I love it. Uh, as a final bonus, for anyone who likes to really dig deep into novels, Yudkowsky has stated that methods of rationality is a puzzle that's meant to be solvable. There, there's a lot of clues that are laid out within as to what's going to happen, and a reader who's paying attention and really wants to can work out what's going to happen before it's revealed at the end. Toward that end, there are a number of places online where people discuss methods of rationality and what they think is happening. There's a thread on TV tropes, there's occasional blogging and comments made, there's a dedicated uh, Reddit subreddit for methods of rationality, um, as well as people commenting on the story directly sometimes in the fan fiction home. So if you're into that sort of puzzle solving, this story will be right up your alley. The final arc will be released later this year, possibly early next year, so there's still time to get in on the action. Now, all that being said, the fanfic isn't for everyone. Uh, there are some people who dislike how Harry talks to adults. Most of those people are parents. <laughs> I'm not a parent, so I don't know. I don't have a problem. Um, but some people don't like that. Some other people just don't get into the story itself, which is fine. Not every story is for everyone. Sometimes you just don't like it and you move on to something else. And also the humor doesn't appeal to everyone. It's a very kind of internet-centric sort of humor. If you love internet memes and those sorts of things, you'll love this. But again, humor is a taste. Uh, in addition to that, some of the dark parts are pretty dark. So I wouldn't recommend this to anyone who isn't at least in their teens yet. Uh, the, some of the terminology and complex ideas are probably too complex for children. And the story does touch on some adult subject matter a few times. So probably keep it to the teens and up. I'm just about done. Um, I'll wrap it up with some final info on where you can find it. The official home is on fanfiction.net. You can go there and search for Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality, or you can just Google Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. The cleanest site, which has a table of contents, links to resources and threads, and various other things you need, is hpmor.com. That is where I go whenever I read it. Uh, there is also the audiobook version, which I produce at hpmorpodcast.com. And of course, everything's free because it's fan fiction and it's online. Okay. That's my presentation. I hope you learned whatever you wanted to learn. And uh, give it a shot if you haven't read it yet. And maybe you'll like it as much as I do. I'm now opening the floor to any questions. I hope there's some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs>